So, is the Flaviera Advent Calendar a product that you might be interested in? Let's get started. First things first, what is an advent calendar? For those uninitiated with it or unfamiliar with the term, advent calendar is basically a calendar leading up to Christmas. Basically comes in a box. There are 24 windows for the 24 days in December leading up to Christmas. Each day has its own window. You open up the window and inside is a little treat. Traditionally, it's chocolate, but over the years, it's really expanded into many different things. You got you got toys, you got beer, you got whiskey advent calendars. So this is not a sponsored video. I got this Flaviar, Flaviar advent calendar from my friends as a present. So might have a slight inherent bias about how I enjoyed this product. The Flaviar advent calendar comes in at about 162 euros for 2022. What do you get with it? Well, you get this very nice box. Inside it are um, a tasting glass branded by Flaviar, as well as a coaster to put that wonderful glass on and 24 whiskey vials. On top of that, you also lastly get a nice whiskey tasting journal to go along with your journey. The box itself is a nice, sturdy, big box. The materials are good, solid cardboard. Um, the windows themselves inside it are also exceptionally nice. They're very solid, satisfying to open and pop open. And inside it is also filled with styrofoam to protect the glass vials, keep them positioned, protect them from travel, protect them from any bumps. It's also sometimes packed a little bit too tight. So sometimes you might be struggling a little bit to get it out, but in terms of the end of the spectrum of too loose and too tight, this is exactly where it ought to be. The dimensions of this box, yeah, it's something to consider. It is a big box, so be mindful. Hopefully you have the space in a smaller apartment like ours in Amsterdam, just need it to clear out some shelf area and that was fine. If you're in a big house, you'll have space aplenty. But just so that you know, it is uh, 42 centimeters high, uh, 24 wide and 14 deep. So in inches, that would be 17 inches by 10 by six, approximately. Yeah, that's pretty much all that you need to know about it. Next up, the glass. It's also solid build. It's your standard whiskey tasting glass. The second piece, tasting coaster. A tasting coaster. The coaster, also tsk, concrete, solid. The one thing I should say though is I think that they skipped a step in the production with this one. It's just solid gray concrete. It's supposed to be a little bit more like the color of this box. And yeah, as you can see, it's anything but that. So let's talk about the whiskey tasting journal. In here, what you will find is just one page for every single day to take your notes. And in it, it's asking you for, you can fill in the details about the brand, the expression, the alcohol percentage, the spirit type, as well as any tasting notes that you might have across the thing. It also has a QR code, basically brings you to the website or also redirects you to the app so that you can download the app. More on that later. Then last but not least, the vials that all the whiskeys come in. They are all 50 milliliters, comes to about a 1.6, 1.7 ounces. You get a little bit of information on the front of it, the number of which day it is. Very useful, especially if you were to pull out multiple ones, you kind of forget which one is which. It's right there, big number on the front. Additionally, if you already want to kind of spoil yourself and funnel your tasting experience, your blind tasting experience, it has additional information on it already as well. Um, one being the alcohol by volume percentage and the second kind of a hint as to what type of whiskey it is. So look at it if you want to already prime your senses and your brain. If you don't, don't look at it. You'll be none the wiser and you'll have a, a pure blind tasting experience. One downfall I would say about the whiskey vial is the pour. Only the pour if you don't want to pour out the entire 50 milliliters in one go. For those of you that are gonna take the entire vial every single day, then no problem, it pours out just fine. I just mean that when you're pouring and you wanna stop, and maybe this is based on the user, but I did not have a single day that a drop or two would not just pour down the side. And um, you know, I mean, what is a drop or two? Is it really an issue? Not really, but it still felt annoying that I couldn't pour it 
properly. The last thing that you get access to as part of the Flaviar Advent Calendar experience, it's not something physical that comes in the box or gets delivered to you, but it is access to their tasting calendar website or the app. So you reach that by scanning the QR code and then you can get to the app or the website because some of you might have been wondering, where do I get the facts about what whiskey I am actually tasting? Where can I get the facts about what the smell and the taste notes are actually supposed to be? And better yet, if I like this whiskey, which distillery is this coming from? Which whiskey is it? And how much can I buy a bottle for? To answer all those questions, that's where you go to the app or the website. And these two, they, they give pretty much the same experience, but there are some minor differences between the two that you should be aware of. The cool thing is they're both available to you and you have the choice of which one you want to do. The advantages of the website is that it's very basic, very standard, very condensed, and that's it. You go in, you click the number of the day that you want to taste, it opens up and it gives you all the facts as it is. Um, it has a nice little infographic chart as well, picture that shows all the flavor profiles and gives a brief description about the distillery itself and the stats of the whiskey. The app, on the other hand, gives a much more personalized experience. So in there, you create your account, you can go in there and directly see everything. It records everything, something that the website does not. And Basically, the way that the app works is same experience. You go in, you click the day, the window opens, but now first thing that happens that the website doesn't do is it asks you to rate the whiskey on a scale from minus five to plus five. And then also a little box for text input to add any additional notes that you want. So you can put in your tasting notes, you can write down what you thought of it, you can add whatever you want in that text box. So that's really nice. You do that, it moves on to step two. And then step two, they ask you to rate the whiskey that you just tasted versus a random pick of three, up to three previously tasted whiskeys in Advent Calendar. So then you have to do the same thing. There's up from five to other five in the direction, which whiskey do you prefer more? Once you've done that, it reveals what the whiskey is. It tells you about the distillery. On top of that, if you want to see that nice little infographic that the website had as well, as well as the, the stat sheet, then you have to click the show me more button where it will redirect you out of the app towards the Flaviar store. And then it brings you to the bottle page of that store and then you get all of the additional details. So I guess this is where the difference between the two is. Website really all in one place, app, bit more personalized, really tasting experience, but the information is a little bit more scattered around, so to say. One additional thing to note about the app, the app does feel like you're being profiled. What they're doing is they're asking you to rate all the things, and then with all those ratings and comparisons, they basically try to aggregate that all together and map out what your tasting profile is. So at the end of the entire 24 days, they will then come back at you and be like, hey, we noticed that during your advent calendar tasting across all the 24 whiskeys that you tasted, you had the tendency to like these flavor profiles and you dislike these. So based on that, here are some recommendations of other whiskeys that we believe that you may like. So if you're against that, don't opt into the app stick with the tasting notebook and stick with the website and you'll still have a great experience. Good thing is the user can choose which way and how much information they want to divulge to Flaviar. Great. All right. Now let's get into the details. What can you expect out of the 2022 advent calendar from Flaviar? All of these 24 whiskeys, was it worth it? Was it not? So, Let's go down to the breakdown. First, disclaimer, this is purely the 2022 Flavor Whiskey Calendar only. Just use this as an indication, kind of being like, hey, if I were to have put down this much money, am I happy with this type of variety that I'm getting? Well, let's first go into like the country distribution because the fun thing about a blind tasting box is the diversity and the surprises that await you in there. What we got were six Scottish whiskeys, four French, four American, three Irish, one Dutch, one Israeli, one Indian, one Japanese, one Australian, one German, and one Spanish. All in all, in terms of the distribution, pretty solid, 
happy, great experience. Some fun facts about the individual vials. Number one, highest absolute alcohol percentage. This one is a 62% Indian whiskey, goes for 67 euros a bottle. Another fun fact, there was a nine-year-old single malt scotch uh, from the distillery chapter seven. This was all bottled from just one cask, one barrel. So ultimately what that means is there's only 284 bottles that were made in of this whiskey. Pretty unique. The most expensive bottle in the bunch was a 77 euro single malt from France, from Bren. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, B-R-E-N-N-E. -E. The cheapest one was a 28 euro blended scotch. The majority of whiskeys in terms of the absolute alcohol percentage was in the 40 to 50% range as expected. There were three that were higher than 55. Pricing, let's see, what kind of bottles did they put into this? How expensive were they? How much value was in there? This one was an interesting one. For this comparison, I took the prices from Flaviar website from their shop where available. For the few bottles where there was no price, where it was already sold out on Flaviar, I instead looked at local distillery, uh, distilleries, online distil uh, sellers as well, and pulled out the prices that I could find and took an average for those bottles. There's only a couple of them, but that's how I did it. So bear in mind that that is then the average of the Dutch market. Swings it just a little bit, maybe, but this is how that comes together. So what does it come down to? We have six bottles that were below the 40 euro mark. So on the cheaper side of things, seven bottles were between 40 and 50 euros. And we had three between 50 and 60, five bottles, 60 to 70, and three bottles that were priced above 70 with 77 being the most expensive. So all in all, all that comes down to is an average of 53 euros per bottle of the bottles that were found in the Flavier Whiskey Advent Calendar. When we look at it from a value perspective, you know, then is it worth it? Well, you pay 162 for this, which gives you 24 vials. So that basically brings it down to 675 euros per vial. If you think about the average price of the bottle that you find in the Flaviar Advent Calendar being 53 euros, and then the average bottle size for our whiskey is 700 milliliters, if one of these vials is 50 milliliters, that means out of one of those 700 milliliter bottles, you will be able to get 14 vials. So 53 euros, average bottle, 14 vials. That brings it to about 3.8 euros per vial. It's pure value there. So 6.75, 3.8. You're basically paying an 80% upcharge for the liquid in these bottles. In that sense, is it worth it? Kind of, kind of a steep sell as well. The alternative perspective, other than just thinking about what am I paying for the liquid inside this glass, is what is the tasting experience and how much would it cost if I did exactly this somewhere else? And from that, I mean, you're not gonna buy each of these individual bottles by yourself. I mean, in there, there will be some whiskeys that you will love. There will be some whiskeys that will disappoint you. Maybe there'll be some that you absolutely despise. <laughs> Who knows? But point being, you don't wanna buy a bottle, take a sip and realize you hate it. So the other alternative to get this kind of diversity is to go to the bar, do some tastings. From that perspective, go to your local bar and see exactly how much it costs. Because in that comparison, when looking at this and then thinking about, hey, where can I sample up to 24 whiskeys and then get this kind of price for a 50 mil pour? And in that perspective, I think the Flavier calendar is priced pretty much exactly where it ought and need to be. From the point of view of having gotten it as a present, this has been an amazing experience. Like the whiskeys themselves, for the most part, almost all were great. There were only a couple in there where I personally was like, ooh, okay, yeah, this one I definitely won't be buying again. But that's also fun. That's also part of, of the journey and part of discovering what your whiskey style and taste preferences are. The app, great. The website, good. The, the booklet, nah, didn't use it, actually. Um, so for that perspective, 
amazing. From a purchasing perspective, I think it still hits the mark. You still get a great product, you still get good value for what you buy, and all in all, it's a wonderful experience, and in it were some great whiskeys to experience. So with that, what are some of the things that I would want to have different in an upcoming calendar? Number one, tasting journal. I would say that, I mean, you add in already pre-filled blocks for the brand, for the expression, for the absolute alcohol percentage, the spirit type and notes. Why not also a rating? I mean, you ask them to rate it in the app, this should replace the app, perhaps. It's pretty much the first step of the app. Why not add in a rating as well? You can add it in the notes as a person by yourself, but I don't know. I felt like a rating box is kind of necessary here. The second thing I would change is the 24th day. In most advent calendars, specifically the chocolate ones, the 24th day usually is a bigger window and it is a bigger piece of chocolate. The 24th day, the day of Christmas Eve, that day is a little more special and it should be here too. In it, you did put a single malt scotch, great. You put in a Northland scotch whiskey, also pretty damn good, but it's a 45 euro bottle and that is below the average of what's in this box. It's still a great whiskey, I enjoyed it, but I felt like, you know, when you look at the stats on paper, it underwhelms it a little bit. It took a little bit away from the 24th day. It's like, ah, nice. Oh, that was it? Okay. You know, that, that's kind of how the process was when the reveal happened. You know, just end it on a bigger bang. End it with a little bit more oomph. Maybe even a bigger vial, bigger box or something. Another part that I would want to see different in the next advent calendar is the consistency between the app and the website. Number one is in the app, at least have that nice picture with the flavor profiles already in the app. I mean, that, that from a visual point of view was so great to have on the website when you do the reveal. It's just like, ah, oh, nice, cool. Everything in one picture. Well, not everything, but the key points of what you want to know in a blind tasting in one picture. The bottle, the make, and the flavor notes. Add that to the app. The second part is don't have inconsistencies. This one's a weird one. The 20th and the 24th are reversed in the website and in the app. So what is the 20th in the app is the 24th in the website. What is the 24th in the app is the 20th on the website. So at this point, I genuinely don't know which whiskey I tasted. I'm assuming the app is the correct one, but I'm not sure. So correct this mistake and make sure that this doesn't happen again in the future. And the last thing, the last thing that I would like to change is the ability to skip steps in the app. Or when you're saying which whiskey you're comparing this head-to-head -head battle on, today's whiskey, versus add in which day it was. Because for me, at day 18, day 12 already, I was scratching my head like, oh yeah, which, which one was this again? I forgot which one this was. After a while, I stopped caring about the head-to-head -head battles in the app but I still had to put in a number. So allow me to skip it or add some additional information to help the user be a little more informed in case they're not so conscious about each individual bottle the whole time. So yeah, those are the last things that I want. Other than that, everything else, great experience, great product. I personally really loved it. I enjoyed the experience. I'm speaking from a novice point of view coming into the world of whiskey. So for those that might be a little bit further along in their journey, would they enjoy it as much? I don't know. Um, I still think that having that diversity and everything is great. So thank you to everyone who made it this far to the review. I appreciate it. I hope I was able to give some value, share some insights, give you some piece of information that will help make your purchasing decision a little bit easier, um, whether it be for yourself, for a friend, for a loved one. It's a great whiskey present. If you liked it, if it was helpful, hit that like button, subs if you loved it, and take care and have a wonderful day.